What's up guys, Jay-Z NES back again to talk about the GameCube and one of its flagship titles, Luigi's Mansion. Now I don't really have a lot of like nostalgic attachment to this game. Uh, the, the most I remember was, I kind of remember when the GameCube came out, you know, and uh, I remember my friends having it. Now um, the thing is, at the time I was still rocking the 64 because I had just bought this with uh, kind of my own money. This is the first system I ever bought with my own money for like 40 bucks. I had uh, Mega Man 64 on there, which is Mega Man Legends, which is a great game. Love that game. I had um, a few others on there, Ocarina of Time, obviously, and uh, Majora's Mask, which my brother gave me, uh, which is one of my favorite games of all time. Um, but I was still rocking the 64 at the time. I didn't really have a lot of interest in the GameCube. I'd seen some friends who had it, like I said, and my cousins had it. and. Uh, I don't think I would have been as interested in Luigi's Mansion here had my cousins not uh, shown it to me. Now, I, I, you know, when I did get, eventually get the GameCube, there were some games on there like uh, the Sonic Adventure uh, kind of remake here uh, of that was really good, and uh, stuff like Wind Waker was pretty good. Um, the uh, collection of Zelda games here, which was Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time, and the first two Zeldas, and this is where I actually first played and beat Zelda 2, so. Um, that's pretty cool. Really good for that. I really love Zelda 2. And the first two Harry Potter games, especially uh, the second one here, uh, Chamber of Secrets, were uh, pretty good on this system. But uh, And Twilight Princess, but I don't have a copy of that anymore. But I played that more on the Wii. But anyways, um, basically, you know, those were kind of my experiences with the GameCube, so I don't really have much to go on there. But um, I do remember, like I said, my cousins having it. They had that Zelda disc and a few other games. But um, one of the more notable ones was Luigi's Mansion, which uh, I'd always seen, and my, all my friends who had the system had this. And most of them had Super Mario Sunshine as well, uh, which was another good, pretty good game. And that's more what people were expecting kind of from it um, after Mario 64. But this was kind of a bold move on Nintendo's part to launch with Luigi's Mansion, because right, they weren't done with Mario's Sunshine yet, but... You know, it's not really what people were expecting. Um, they were expecting more of a sequel to Mario 64, uh, with the whole Mario 128 thing that never actually happened. Um, but they got kind of this, uh, like, proto-survival horror, like, uh, Resident Evil-style puzzle game, you know, and nobody was really expecting that. So I feel like a lot of people kind of wrote this game off, but um, you know, underneath the all the that there's is um, a pretty good game. It's very solid, and I actually really um, enjoyed it. Now that I've gotten to it all these years later, this uh, this copy actually came from my friend Mayab, who um, gave it to me a long time ago because I don't think he really likes this game, but I like it. I enjoyed it. Let's get into it. Let's how how's Luigi's Mansion? You know, it's pretty good. So let's go there. Honestly, at the time when this came out, I, th I kind of felt like the whole platformer thing, the whole uh, Mario 64 and all of that was kind of played out. So I actually welcomed a game like the Luigi's Mansion. I thought that was a kind of a unique move on Nintendo's part. The object is to go around into the different rooms and catch the ghosts, of which open up new paths to other rooms. Most rooms consist of mini boss ghosts that need to be flashed in a certain way uh, with your flashlight, or taken down with an element of power at the right time. Once a heart is revealed, a health timer counts down as you struggle to keep a hold of the ghost. When it reaches zero, you catch said ghost. That and the exploration of the mansion makes for a pretty enjoyable game of solving puzzles and catching ghosts. The gameplay is fun and makes you feel like a Ghostbuster or like Danny Phantom. There's also optional booze that are collected for fun and completion. Some are a pain in the ass as they consistently shift rooms, 
but most aren't that bad. The worst ghost is the final boss, and, and without spoiling it, there's a lot of bullshit to it, and it dishes out a lot of frustrating and unfair damage. The atmosphere and the backgrounds are extremely well done, the environment just screams Haunted Mansion, but like if Disney did it, so it would be cute. This is not a scary game, but it has the horror kind of vibe, if that makes sense. Think something like Coraline, where it can have a creepy aesthetic at times, but it still remains pure art when looked at. Playing this on the Wii with the component cables makes it look really solid. It's a beautiful game with memorable and well-designed characters and levels. The music isn't much to write home about, as it's mostly a variation on one theme, but it sets the right mood regardless, and gets the job done well enough. There's not much of a plot outside of a Save Mario, but I kind of like Luigi's subtle character building. He's kind of a scaredy cat, but he keeps going, anyway, out of the love for his brother. By the end, he has to face his dragon, which takes the form of an iconic fear of Luigi's. I like how he finally got his time to shine, and he wasn't playing second fiddle for once. Over overall, Luigi's Mansion is a really great game, and it just makes me appreciate the GameCube just that much more. It's very charming, and it's got a great aesthetic to it, and a really solid gameplay that only Nintendo could have pulled off. I really like this game, I'm glad I experienced it after all of these years. I'm going to give Luigi's Mansion a 9 out of 10. Next time, this has been Jay-Z NES saying stick around for more reviews and underrated games, and Luigi's Mansion off the backlog. Boom! Jay-Z, 